Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lore Week. I'm your host, Lore Dude. You may or may not have heard of me. So today's lore week will be set during the dark times. Hi everyone. How is everyone doing today? Oh, my neck. If you haven't yet, make sure you voot. I'm going to leave that voot up for, a, you know, at least a decent chunk of today for people to be able to weigh in on that. That is the vote for whether or not we will be covering Digital Devolver's conference tonight. They might be like, well, why wouldn't you want to? Well, the only downside is that it's at 11 in the evening, which is really, really late. So. I actually did get several things. Yes, hazardous. Oh, this is the wrong thing. Yeah, I made the horrible mistake of experimenting with a new uh, pillow setup last night, and my neck hurts, so I'm not going to be doing that again. <laughs> Speaking of which, where's my Aleve? There it is. Yes, we will literally be in the dark times before the Empire when we stream Digital Devolver. Hello, everyone. So... Uh. That's true, Absurdity. We need a command and conquer for people who don't know how to use their brains. Now, it's, I, I, should, I should say that more, ac more accurately, because that sounds like I'm accusing young people of being stupid, which isn't what I mean. So let me phrase that more accurately. We need a command and conquer that teaches people not to use their brains. There we go. We're good. <sighs> and of course, as you can see, we're doing a slightly different layout today because I felt it would be more immersive for my show if we had rain and snow instead of just our usual background. Oh, I, I caught that hazardous. I just didn't comment on it because whatever. He said a lot of things that I just didn't dissect because it was too obvious, you know? <laughs> Dude, do you have any idea how immersive this is? Like, I got rain back here and snow. How's the volume? This is a little too big for this. There we go, perfect. Now that is interesting that you say the volume is good. I'm hoping that means I got it working. It's hard to properly test because I literally hear things differently than you do. So let's talk about a pre-ramble thing for a second here because I got a couple of pre-ramble topics for you. Actually, I cannot crit source. In fact, this is the only rain background I have. I was actually really disappointed. Apparently, I just never bought any rain backgrounds, which is weird. But you can hear me, right? Because we need rain and snow max time, obviously. So yes, you guys have noticed I am using ducking. Um, which is the, believe it or not, that is actually the professional uh, term for that. I know, weird. Uh, 
This is actually not the first time I've tried to get this working, uh, but it is the first time that I have succeeded at getting it working. And uh, go figure, the, the settings are basically the inverse of what I feel like they should be, so no wonder it never was actually working before. So the first pre-ramble topic I have to talk about is uh, I try constantly to appeal, appease you guys with regards to volume. However, every time I try something, someone complains about it. And then one of the most common comments I get, like 90% of the comments I get is, Oh my god, the game's too loud, or the sound's too loud, or whatever. When it's at negative 10 decibels, and at half volume, and at half volume. Like, it's super quiet. And I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, if that's what makes you guys happy. But every time I go back and re-listen to something myself, I can't hear the game! <laughs> and that's kind of a problem when I deliberately go quiet for games that have voice acting and whatnot. And it's just this... I don't understand it. So I'm like, there's gotta be some way I can fix this so that, at the very least, I can, you know, people can actually hear the game, while at the same time they can hear me. Now, ducking is, of course, the best possible option. Uh, no, I actually verified with four separate people, Takoida. Um, anyways. So... Having said that, uh, we, I actually talked to an audio engineer last night, this is not a joke, and we were discussing possibilities of why that is, and we both agreed that basically my options were twofold. Give up, <laughs> or use ducking. So I'm using ducking. And we're just going to test that today and see how it works. Now, for a bit of testing, I actually have the game audio, by default, louder than I normally would. In fact, this is roughly twice as loud as I would normally set this up. You're listening to ducking right now. It's like this. That's ducking. And then I talk, and then it goes down, and then I stop talking. That's ducking. So, this is my attempt at trying to, to accommodate, because as Permius points out, and that is the real problem, the real problem is that everyone has different sound setups, different speakers, different headphones, different everything, and that's, that's the problem, right? I'm trying to appeal to, like, a bagrillion different types of audio setups as much as possible. That's, that's the goal. So this way, the audio is nice and loud when it needs to be, when I go quiet for people who have a lower setup, but it'll go down so that I can be audible even for people who have, a, they have basically the opposite setup, right? That's the goal. That's the goal. So, we're doing the best we can here. <sighs> uh, this song is called Resurrections by Lena Rain. It is from the Celeste soundtrack. It's one of the very few soundtracks that I feel safe to play without variancing. That's also why I'm playing it, because I figured I'd play a louder soundtrack. Like, if I played the Oblivion stuff, it would be like, whatever, right? Because everyone knows about that. Yeah, me too, Katabo. <laughs> I'm always trying to be more professional scene. I know it doesn't sound like it. That's true, Kid Viper. I also have twiddled with... twiddled? Tweaked. Fiddled with the settings uh, quite a bit to accommodate my particular manner of speech. Otherworld? Uh, no. That, that, that has copy-wrong potential. So here, let's try something quieter, shall we? So we're gonna switch down to the Morrowind playlist here, okay? So, same volume. I have not changed a, a thing on the volume. This is just a different song. So that's the first thing I want to talk about, was the ducking thing. And what was the other thing I want to talk about? Hang on. Uh, we have an initial start date for Telltale Walking Dead, Season 4. That will be August 14th. Most unfortunately, we'll probably not be streaming that when it comes out, but by the time it's done, there's a pretty good chance that we will actually continue to uh, stream it. Like we always do. I mean, we always stream Telltale stuff, right? So... Uh, I don't know, Emperor Valerian. I mean, you are incredibly evil. Sure, we'll go ahead and say yes. Uh, the next conference is in 5 hours, 38 minutes, and 35 seconds. Roughly. So anyways. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next thing I want to talk about. This is just a brief thing. 
I've decided it's it's kind of my goal in life to make the entire internet hate me. And so I am painting a giant target over my chest by responding to the Kathleen Kennedy rumors. I don't think she should be fired. There's the target. Come at me. Because I don't care. Um, the Kathleen Kennedy rumors... I want to explain why, by the way. Because I actually do have a very specific reason why. Um, but I, want to, I always like to drop the bombshell first, because anyone who's going to respond without listening to me is not someone worth listening to. However, anybody who's now listening to me is someone who is worth hearing their, their feedback on. Makes sense? So I always drop the bombshell first. In I, I did a little digging after we discussed her the last time. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy is the current head of Lucasfilm, functionally. Uh, or Lucas, I guess I should just say. Uh, she is someone who's actually been working at LucasArts, uh, or <laughs> LucasArts, sorry, Lucasfilm, for many, many years now. Uh, since, you know, since the prequel era, actually. I'm sorry. And she is one of the few people Lucas actually connected with on a more personal level. Which may or may not have any relevance to you. And may or may not be a positive or a negative to you. But I only point that out because it is probable that we could state that Kathleen Kennedy, for whatever her many, many flaws... Oh, and she's got some. Uh, she does care. And I think that's actually important. However, what I, so I'm going to finally get to my actual point here. I do actually think that she should be get, got, just, just get the hell off camera, basically. I have actually seen multiple interviews from her and uh, read the, the release reports and tw tweets that she's put out and so, whatnot. And she is um, terrible at communicating and terrible at PR. In fact, she has actually been actively generating negative PR because of her reactionary nature. She is the kind of person who, again, cares and does so by going, Bleh! Now, I bet you know some people like that. In case you're wondering, the rumor I'm responding to is that there has been, you know, some idea cycling around that she uh, is being replaced. And I do think that would be a mistake right now, personally. Because I have... <laughs> hey, Tara. Uh, I have seen uh, that she is actually... No, the, the reason I think she should keep her go job is because in my uh, interview, uh, interview... Research, in my research, she seems to be a pretty good producer. Like, not the best one ever. But she does actually seem to be a fairly good producer. And that's the kind of thing I think she should be pigeonholed into. My opinion. And <laughs> as has been pointed out, what happens if we replace her? Like, anybody who goes in, in in place of her is going to have to deal with pretty much the exact same baggage that she currently is. Now, it may be better. That's absolutely true. And it may be worse. That's absolutely true, too. We have no idea. That's just my opinion. I don't actually have anything else to say about this, believe it or not. I think she is an acceptable producer, and I think that she should go produce and do her job. Rather than not. My opinion. And yeah, producer. so a producer is usually not uh, involved creatively. They can be. Of course they can be. Um... That's also true, Frackles. That's also very true. That that she, uh, historically speaking, she has worked much better in a team than she has alone. Um, I, I actually thought about making a lorium for that and calling it the Peter Molyneux effect, but then I realized that nobody would understand that because Peter Molyneux is well known for something else. See, for those of you not aware, Peter Molyneux was actually a pretty good developer when he was part of a team. And we could go back and prove this historically. Like, we could see some of the, the games he pushed out and some of the new creative oomph he managed back when he was a member of the team. When he became the leader of the team, eh, and then when he became, 
the guy who was the who was the PR guy, in addition to being the leader of the team, it's just. Now, I'm not saying Fable or other games he's done are bad, but I am saying that I firmly believe that Peter Molyneux works much better when he's not the guy in charge. And I, I would actually agree. Yeah, John Romero, another good example of this. Um, I believe that Kennedy is another example of this. That's just my opinion. I don't know for total certainty. I think I, I do want to say one thing, though. And, again, I'm just painting a target in my face, but... I want to be honest with you guys. That's kind of my job. The Peter Principle. I like that. Um, although I like to use syndrome for negative statements. So I'd call it the Peter Syndrome. Um, exactly, Frackles. Exactly. Um, I was talking to my mom just last night about Ocean's 8, I think, the new one. She thought it was average. You know, it had issues, but it was still enjoyable. She doesn't use my terminology, but she would call it a, a, a net positive, just barely, though. And, um, I... We had a discussion back and forth, which, obviously, I'm not going to share the full details with you, but I really wish we could keep politics and controversy out of fiction. <laughs> you know? I know that's never happening. I know that that's just an integral reality of life now, as a nature of how easy and swift communication is. But it just gets kind of tiresome, you know? <sighs> Anyways. So... Nice big target. Blah, blah, blah. I'm looking forward to the comments section when this goes up to YouTube. Uh, Paradox bought Hairbrain Studios. It's the other little not-quite announcement I wanted to share. Um, and... <laughs> uh, I mean, no, it, it, to address what people are saying, no, obviously fiction has always been influenced by, by real-life controversy. Um... I just don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> just to put that as bluntly as I can. You know? Uh, we're in the dark times. Anyways, yeah, it's the Battletech studio. It's the guys who made the recent Battletech game. Um, Paradox has, yeah, has procured Hairbrain. They did this just last week. And um, I, I, I'm not sure what I think about that. What, what that means is Paradox now has the authority and control over Hairbrained and Hairbane's products. That may or may not be a good thing. It may or may not be a bad thing. Because what can happen in this kind of acquisition is the parent studio says, okay, we're going to help fund you so you don't have to go to Kickstarter or whatever. So your next, or so you don't have to go to another publisher. And your next game or product or whatever will be produced. And then you will kick up some of those proceeds up to us because we ultimately own the product, right? That's pretty much the, the, the as neutral as I could put this. Now, this means Paradox now has a creative control over what Hairbrain puts out, as to put a negative thing, but it also means that Hairbrain will have more financial security to take more risks and produce more content, which is, a, which is the positive side of things. So, you know, I... I <laughs> This could go well or badly. Paradox is such... I, I know this sounds like a joke, but I mean this with total sincerity. Paradox is such a paradox to me. I know, I know. Because I love their games. I really do. Like, I just... Oh, no, no more, you know? And I hate their company policies. <laughs> I hate the way they approach so many aspects of their business model. So we'll see. We'll see. It'll be very interesting to see where this goes. <sighs> Anyways. <clears throat> so the final thing, uh, since pro probably plenty of people are here, uh, let's get to the announcements in case you haven't read this up here. Um, so first of all, this is the big one. Um, future streams have basically been temporarily suspended. Now, again, bombshell. Let me go ahead. I've actually, this is, I think, like the seventh or so time I've announced this. But more people, 
watch Lore Week than any other feature I do. This, this is as wide of a net as I could possibly spread during Lore Week, so that's why I'm mentioning this here. <laughs> as a quick aside, I wish all of my viewers were on Twitter. I know that sounds terrible, but it, it would be great if I just had one thing I could go to, and with this one thing, send out an announcement to everyone. But I don't. I have, like, six or seven things to announce to everyone. Anyways. I mean, not everyone... I can't even do it on the website. <laughs> not everyone even knows about the website. <sighs> um, so let me explain why this is getting suspended. And I'm going to get a little real here, just for a second, okay? I... I am f capable, physically, uh, mentally, and emotionally, of continuing to do basically full-time streaming and full-time YouTube at the same time. I can do that. But it's kind of killing me. Like, not in the literal sense. I, it's, I shouldn't say that. But it has reached the point where it is past where it is really severely affecting my ability to function as a human being. Um, the panic attacks, the stress, etc. has gotten to the point where I'm no longer capable of doing lore runs while still doing YouTube stuff. Uh, this really started happening with the STO lore run and the Oblivion lore run, or the Elder Scrolls lore run. So, um, I would love to go ahead and... And I'm just going to put this as bluntly as I can. I would love to go ahead and pull back on YouTube because YouTube is the overwhelming amount of my time and work right now. Uh, but I can't. That is my daytime job, basically. So, uh, YouTube is going to keep going normally. That's not going to be interrupted at all. But I, uh, everything that's currently on the website is happening. But uh, I am not scheduling anything else until I have an absolutely massive backlog. That's my mental goal. I have an exact date in mind for uh, how many days ahead, I, or excuse me, how many months ahead. Yes, months. Uh, I want to be before I can go ahead and do that. Uh, those lore runs will still be happening, Tai 2. They just will not be happening, like, next week. So, lore runs will still be happening later. Premiere runs will still be happening later. And everything on the website will still be happening. Um, but for the most part, I'm not even going to commit to streaming every weekend like I usually do because there are some weekends where I still have the ability to record, in which case I will be recording. Um, so I'm going to be spending the next several weeks of my life, after E3 stops basically, uh, just pounding out as many YouTube videos as I can and trying to get a, that massive backlog in place. So, there you go. Heads up. <sighs> the second announcement is actually related to something that happened at YouTube. So, uh, for those of you not aware, YouTube private messaging is going away. They're not only shutting it down, they're deleting all existing messages. And I have had many people say, hey, how do I reach out to you privately? And I don't actually really have a good way of answering that question. Like, my Tumblr doesn't actually have a private message thing. Uh, Twitch's thing is incredibly unreliable. Discord is rather inclusive, and I don't like giving out my Discord name anyways. Um, in previous circumstances, I don't give out my email. In fact, I basically never have given out my email. So, uh, oh, and Twitter, which most people don't even use, also doesn't even allow private messages unless you do co-following, which is stupid. So, um, basically, my answer is usually, my, my answer has been for many years at this point, just message me on YouTube. Well, since that is now going away, I have finally had to create what is functionally a dummy email. Uh, lorerunnershow at gmail.com. You can see it right up there. And that will be the me method by which people can contact me going forward. And the end. Please don't spam me, is all I ask. So that's what's going on with the second announcement there. <sighs> I don't understand your question, Savicom, I'm sorry. I can't open my t d Twitter DMs, that is true. Uh, however, as I mentioned earlier, an overwhelming majority of people don't seem to use Twitter, especially people who follow me. In fact, there are people in chat who don't have Twitter. So, this is my new universal communication point. Ah, gotcha, Savicom. 
Um, so I'm actually going to be out of town with my dad for two weeks in October. I don't remember when Dragon Quest XI comes out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, you can use Steam if you want to. I always stay offline on Steam, but I also always check my messages on Steam. So that's up to you. <sighs> so, uh, with, uh, with all of that stated, let's talk about the one and only actually bit of news thing that I want to talk about today. Uh, where is the... There it is. Because I am streaming with low delay, Micromano, which increases the bit requirements on your end. Bit rate requirements. Oh yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3 got a release date. Oh yeah, I turned off the sound for this. <laughs> so. For the duration of E3, the sound will be off for that notification. But. Fear. <laughs> thank you very, very much, Sparhawk Gaming. As ever, those Twitch Prime subs are uh, very much appreciated. Thank you. So. Um. It's the dark time. We should change that to the dark times. Let's not do that. <laughs> I'd have to change the emote, and dark times won't fit. Like, like Mount Klein here, for example. He, he could have the dark times, or he could have fear. But I'm not sure which actually works better. What do you guys think? Thank you very, very much, Mount Klein. Uh, again, those Twitch Prime subs are much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, actually, technically speaking, it would be ducked, but only if I talked while it was happening. That's how ducking works. It, it pulls its its audio down based on another audio input, and it has to be a completely separate audio input, which in this case is my microphone. Uh, what's my timestamp? 26. I'll just jot that down really quick. So Valve has opened their door. Um, they have flat out stated that they will no longer police their games that are allowed on their thing, basically at all, so long as it doesn't, like, actually violate legality. That's as far as they're willing to go. Probably, Micromano, and it'll suck. But there's not a lot I can do about that. I have to keep up with the YouTube stuff. So, for those of you not aware, um, Valve, and what's funny is I have seen as much positive stuff about this as I have negative stuff. The, uh, I'm trying to think how to phrase this. <laughs> Valve has decided that, so over the years, Valve has had what is effectively no concrete policy regarding games that are on Steam. Uh, there are actually quite a few people in who actually work at Valve who are filled with fear because of Charlie's Waffle here. Or Charlie Waffles, sorry. I always mix up the S there. Thank you very, very much, Charlie Waffles. Although I never asked for it, I do still appreciate it. Thank you. Who disagree on what should be allowed on their store or not. Um, and that's pr probably one of the biggest reasons this is speculative why Steam's approach to what kind of games are on Steam uh, has been so schizophrenic over the years. Sometimes they allow some stuff, and sometimes they won't allow basically the exact same stuff. It has been a very mixed bag. Now, we have probability, but not certainty, that they have been experimenting with different approaches to this, most especially within the last year. This would also be why several people have, you know, have, have been like, oh my god, Steam is pulling this game or is allowing this game but isn't allowing this game and so forth and so on for the last year. What Valve has decided to do is basically be like, yep, okay, clunk. Greetings to Buenos Aires. Uh, my aunt is actually going there later this year, so I hope it's going to be some good weather. And welcome to my stream. As I like to say, don't be a stranger. Uh, if you ever have anything to share or chat or talk about, now's the time for it. 
Um, so the um, I'm I'm not actually sure I can give an opinion on this because there's too many variables that disagree with what is relevant. Like, to explain what I mean, by some of the the mindset you can go into this, A is what matters, but in some of the mindsets, B is what matters. Like, is it more important to allow the free market to determine and wait whatever it is? Um, is it because of the fact... Uh, is it that we should have quality control in place? Um, is it that we should uh, ensure that certain types of games follow a certain code or guideline? I mean, right? What is more important when it comes to a digital distribution service? And everyone's going to disagree on that. Like, I asked that question, I guarantee you people in chat right now are going to disagree on what is important when it comes to this kind of equation. So it's hard for me to actually give an opinion on this, because I can't decide what I care about most in this one. Because Steam has had an absolute glut of gutter trash for years now, right? Yeah, as Jaludo points out, and this is a problem, you can't just browse for certain types of games. It's functionally, I can actually give you a direct parallel. This is, of course, my opinion. It is a direct parallel to doing this. I'm going to pull up my app store here and look at games. Now, there's the top recommended games, which is usually the ones that are either selling the best have just come out and are from a recommended publisher, or basically they have bought the slot, because that's a thing you can do. So, uh, if I wanted to actually browse for games, this is functionally impossible to browse for games with, a, with even a mild certainty of getting anything good. It's kind of like, to use a, a more clear analogy here, it's kind of like I have a bathtub, okay, and it is filled to the brim with oysters and like I don't know no I've got it like like it's filled to the brim with with uh, oysters and there's like three mussels in there right bear with me now I like mussels but I don't like oysters right <laughs> hang on let me see if I can Hang on, dude. There. Ah. Is there anything in... Oh, God. Ah. Hang on, hang on. Maybe this one? No. <laughs> That's what it already feels like. I almost guarantee that it's going to get worse with the result of this decision. Now, whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing is up to you. Aren't there categories? No, Micromano, you don't get it. This is within categories. This is if I go and look up strategy RPGs. I'm still going to have a bathtub full of oysters. If I had no categories, it would be like swimming through a, a, a lake of oysters. To, to continue the analogy. We're really getting weird with this analogy. But bear with me here. Yeah, as Tequita points out, and I've actually looked at this exact same thing, even if you bo boil it down to turn-based, tactical, and RPG, you still have the bathtub problem. And of course, as Tequita also points out, plenty of people incorrectly label games, right? No, that's exactly true, Hazardous. In fact, I haven't gone searching or browsing for games in quite literally years. Not counting last week when I did a, a significant search in order to uh, try and test my theory here and see if it is still the same way because it, there's not that's not working it's not going to work that way you need to you know how steam works okay i want such and such game hey there it is that's how i use steam so uh yeah this change doesn't affect me at all to be completely blunt <laughs> right i mean all of this does really 
is make it so that everything bad can get in and more good can get in. Whether that is a good or a bad thing, that's opinion. I, I don't think we could state with definitive factuality whether this is actually a good or a bad change. This is a matter of opinion, uh, in my opinion. The discovery queue. So the discovery queue uses tags, like we were just talking about, you know, tactical RPG uh, strategy. That's what the discovery queue uses. In fact, give me a second. Let's see what my discovery queue is right now. Do, 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 do. So the first thing on my thing is bless online because it is popular. Nope. Next. The next is Soul Worker, an anime game, because it is popular. Nope. Next. Hang on. The next in my game is a game called Closers, which I am actually aware of. That is in my queue because it's popular. Nope. Next. Sword Art Online, popular. No, next. EverQuest 2, popular. No, next. Lord of the Rings Online, popular. No, next. This is getting weird. Um, is any, hang on, I'm going to keep going until I get to something that isn't in my queue because it's popular. What? No, come on. No! What are you freaking doing? God damn it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Can I just say I hate the new wish list page? Is that just a thing I can admit? There we go. Okay. Back to the queue. My next thing is shakes and fidgets. I don't even know what that is. Conan! Yeah. Okay, do you got anything new? Seriously, do you have anything that you're going to recommend? Because it's, cause, So the point I was trying to make, because I've done this recently, was I went through here and it's like, this is part of your discovery queue because you tagged games with RPG. And it was a... Uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a harem anime game thing. There's a term for that. I just look at that like, why is that tagged with RPG? <laughs> Hang on. Still getting more populars. Okay, here we go. Jurassic World Evolution is in your queue because it's a top seller. Okay, that's something different. <sighs> Hang on. Oh my god, seemed really. It's good. Da, da, da. Popular, 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 popular. Apparently, Digimasters Online is popular. Vampire is popular. Uh, let's do this. One more try. One more try. Uh, Terra Gloria is in your queue because it is tagged with RPG. I've never even heard of this. Oh, it's like a top-down. It's an MMO. It's, it's, oh, wait, no, it isn't. Is it? It is. It's freaking Ragnarok Online. No. Next. Uh, Sword Art Online. Didn't we just have this one? Uh, popular Vega Conflict. Never heard of that. Anarchy Online. What? <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Florenzia is a free-to-play MMORPG that is in your queue because you have liked games with tag RPG. Okay. Um, what else? Metin Two. This is in your tag because you have you have liked games with tag free-to-play. That would be Star Trek Online, by the way. <laughs> I must keep making my point. I want to try and find something that isn't an MMO. Just anything. Anything that isn't an MMO. Okay, here we go. 
Uh, apparently, pixel graphics is a tag. <laughs> hey, it's Arch Age! Or Arc Age. Anyways, I think I've made my point. I have no idea if this is a good or bad thing, factually or functionally. I, uh... Doesn't, like I said, it doesn't actually affect me. I will continue to use other sources to find games, and then directly search for them. You know what's funny is, hypothetically, this would make perfect sense. Like, if the tags were properly used, if the, uh, the categories were properly used, and if the sorting feature was a little bit more robust, this would be great. Uh, obviously, none of those things are true. <laughs> So it's a bathtub. Go in knowing what you're looking for. Anyways. I do want to talk about one thing, though. Because I just want to get my opinion out there. And to most of you... I know, right, Preacher? Most of you who know me are just going to be like... Well, duh. But just in the off chance I have to say this. Uh, I have a bit of a reputation for being a prude. And... It is true. I, I am very prudish in my overall demeanor and manner. That's just part of who and how I am. Um, I also generally tend to be against romance in fiction, mostly because of how it's applied. Like, you know, do something with it is usually my, my recurring phrase there. However, the idea of actually trying to ban certain uh, games, let's just use a direct example, like hentai games or uh, leaning towards hentai games. There's a term for that. I can't remember what it is. It's when it's not actually pornographic. It's just leaning that direction, like a fan service kind of game. The idea of banning that kind of a thing from just being available or for sale makes absolutely no sense to me. Etchy, thank you. Or Eki? I have no idea how to pronounce that. Um, now, obviously, I don't want my niece to see that because she's five. But that's my job, or rather her parents' job. That's not the company's job. That's not the, the seller's job. That's the parents' job for doing their job of being a parent. I do think that kind of thing should actually be available for sale. I have no problem with that. The idea of saying, I don't like something, so no one else should have access to it, is ludicrous to me. That would be like flat out saying, guys, and I'll use a real example. Guys, I think that we should ban the sale of black licorice. Because I despise it. Because I think it's disgusting. It makes me want to vomit. So therefore, <clears throat> no one should have it. Explain the logic. Would I say the same about EA games? That is slightly more uh, of a complicated circumstance. Because in that case, it's not about banning an EA game because I don't like it. It would be more about banning EA games because EA is functionally damaging to the industry. That's a very different field. That has nothing to do with, this should not be for sale because I disagree with it. Or, this should be not, not be for sale because I don't like it or I morally disagree with it. It's... EA has a functional, provable, mathematical, damaging impact on the industry. <laughs> I don't use this one very often. I used it briefly early on. Ginger Ninja, this is actually one of the earlier ones I bought. And a lot of people hated it, so I stopped using it. Something like that, Necro, yeah. Like, flat-out banning EA is still something I would probably be against. But economic sanctions or some kind of, you know, uh, I, I guess a grassroots movement is actually what that would be. <laughs> wow, Gary. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's another thing. By the way, FF15's mod support finally went live. Sorry, I didn't even mention that. That's kind of a thing, too. Uh, woo! Woo! People are already going nuts with it. 
I look forward to trying it out in about a year. No, I have long since gotten rid of that scene. Like, several, several years ago. Now, actually, I do agree with Gary on one thing. No, I really do. The problem is, what we need... <laughs> I know this is going to sound stupid. We need people with brains. I'm dead serious. We need people with brains to actually filter incoming Steam games. That is my opinion. Not because of their content. Like, not because I disagree with this political message. Not because this happens to have scantily clad women in it. Not because this happens to have violence in it. But we need someone who has a brain. Now, I can explain what I'm talking about very simply. The real difference between computer programs and us is that we can look at literally millions, if not billions, of different points of information within extremely short periods of time and digest all of that very quickly into a full facsimile of what we're looking at. Every time you open your eyes and look around you, you are taking in thousands of points of data. A computer has to have every single one of those points of data defined and, and laid out and coded for, so it will respond to this and this. So, to use an example, I was literally just thinking about this last night while I was going grocery shopping. A computer program might, under the right circumstances, be programmed to recognize a certain type of car. But you, a human being, if you happen to know what the kind of car that is, can just look at it and say, oh yeah, it's a such and such. Because you can look at all of that information and say, yeah, you can come to a conclusion. So, for example, a human being with a brain can sit down and look at games and say, hmm, and look at the, the game Gary was mentioning, the gay, game, the gay game for gays, which is just filled with nothing but stupid hate speech, right? A human being can look at that and say, no. Boop. But then a program functionally can't. An algorithm cannot do that kind of a job. It is my opinion... See, this is part of the quality control thing. <laughs> I know this sounds like I'm literally contradicting myself, but I'm not. I am okay with allowing all types of real, actual games to be producible... Uh, excuse me, saleable uh, and on Steam. What I am not okay with is trash being saleable on Steam. And anybody who says, well, how do you decide what's what, is an idiot. Because anybody who has a brain can tell the difference between something that pushes buttons or something that's satirical, versus something that is garbage. Anybody with a brain can tell when something is garbage. Anybody can. But you need people who are using their brains and actually doing the quality control thing. And to be blunt, that has been Steam's problem for years. Steam has actually been moving further and further away from quality control for years, to the point where they have less actual people involved and more algorithms, trying to push more and more money and time and effort into developing fancier and fancier programs, rather than putting people in seats to test things. <laughs> and the reason why is obvious, and I'm not going to get into that, but let me put it to you this way. Let's say something comes through and it's kind of like a gray thing. And they'll look at that like, hmm. Well, you got two options right there, as far as I'm concerned. Like, if I'm the boss, hey, someone comes to me and says, hey, here's this game. I'm not, I'm not sure if this qualifies. Like, I'm not sure if this should be a bannable. I say, all right, you got two options. You could, you could be on the safe side and let it through, or pull someone else. Pull me. What's the game? I'll look at it. And then we could discuss it back and forth. One of the most fascinating things about human beings is that human beings have the ability to network with each other socially and come to far more complex decisions and opinions based on that networking. Have a department whose job it is to do this, and I guarantee you it would work. The only problem would be the overwhelming uh, flow, right? The quantity coming in. That's the problem. That is a separate 
problem, really. <sighs> hi guys, hi Cool Walker, hi Magister. Um, let me give you an example. Let me use a direct example. Um, hatred? I would go ahead and allow through. Because as much as I look at hatred and I just roll my eyes at how stupid it is, it is still not what I would define as trash. It isn't. It is a fully functional game that is intended to be an overly edgy thing on purpose. It could deliberately embracing the stupidity of the edgy, darkier and edgier thing. But it is not a game like, for example, the Shooting School game that came out uh, two weeks ago. Or whatever. It, it, uh, one of those... <laughs> one of those is a game. The other one of those is trash. Anyways. I digress. No, I wouldn't... Why would I ban Hellblade Senua? That's ridiculous. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Oh, by all accounts, that's a good game. I know, right, Hazardous? It's, it's crazy. You remember when Mortal Kombat was controversial? Because I do. It was not the sole contributing factor. But Lord knows that the ESRB kind of became a thing as a consequence of that. Yeah, exactly. There's censorship and then there's vacuuming. That is a gr that's a great phrase. Can I borrow that, Blue Walrus? <laughs> that is a great phrase. Hey, Twigga. What's up? Welcome to my stream. Um, as I like to say to everyone who pokes their head, it's here, you know, shout-outs. Don't be a stranger. Uh, if you have any thoughts or comments, please feel free to weigh in. I really, really like... If, <laughs> if it's not obvious what I might have just said, I'm, really, I'm a really big, firm believer in social cooperation and social discourse. Yeah, I remember when No Russian was this mega controversial thing. Even though they went way out of their way to avoid that, to avoid the controversy there, you know. The, 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 this has a controversial mission. Do you don't want to play it? And it would just get rid of it. Or, are you sure you want to do it? No. Or, you don't have to shoot it. But, no, 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 it was still a big controversy. <laughs> I got one for you. You remember when Mass Effect 1 was a controversial game? Because <laughs> I do. I also remember when Dungeons and Dragons was a controversial game. As in first edition, by the way. <sighs> you don't remember that, Blue Wolf Alex? Yeah, yeah, it was the, the Mass Effect was a sex simulator thing. Don't you remember that? <laughs> oh, that was great. That was so funny. <laughs> Do you know where your children are? Yeah, no. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, no, you're right, Azadus. You're right. You're all right. Like I said earlier, I kind of wish we could keep all this controversial noise just out of this. Can we just leave it over there in real life? We need to have, like, a forum, a literal physical forum, like a Roman forum, and people who want to just yell and rant about controversy, they just go there. And there's a ticket. It's like $2. You know, one quid, maybe. I don't know. And you just go there. And it's like, here you go. Go yell at each other. Go over there, away from the rest of us, and go yell at each other over there. I got work to do. <laughs> I remember that too, Tazara. Hell, I remember EverQuest having a similar problem. <laughs> Facebook! By the way, I don't have a Facebook. Screw that. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I 
I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop stirring the pot. It's not Halloween. I should probably not do this anymore. I've already got like three targets on my face just from today. I, sh I should probably tone it down a little bit. <sighs> Quick, what's another controversial thing I could say? Um, I did not hate or love Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah. It's true. Mass Effect Andromeda was aggressively average. I've never really changed my opinion on that. I don't like dogs, although I'm not really fond of cats either. I have I get asked every now and again, are you a cat or a dog person? To which my response is always, no. <laughs> Final Fantasy VI is the worst game ever. <laughs> Alright, enough, enough, enough. <laughs> I do actually like FF13-3, and I can say that without hesitation. I hope to be able to replay it someday. The dark times. Let's go ahead and chop, chop off the recording here, though. <laughs>